So we'll put down a SOP import and let's jump over onto our stage. We're going to go and grab our pig. In this case, I don't want to grab everything. Uh, so I'm going to put down an output node here. It's going to say grab everything from there. Uh, in fact, let's jump over to Solaris for a second. And we can see that we're bringing in this pig edit coming in as mesh zero. Now I want to get access to the groups and that's because I want to apply my material just to the pig head and not to the eyeballs because the, we're going to use displacement. And I don't want the eyeballs to get displaced. One way to go and bring in group data is to uh, name it with a name SOP and that's probably the smarter way to do it. But I'm going to come down here and I'm going to turn on subset groups. And I'm going to say bring in head here. So now we've got a head group that we can go and use and we can see it is just there. Can put down a material library now. And we can put down an assign material and we can put down emerge. And I'm gonna create a camera, put the camera into the merge just here. I'll create a dome light and I'll hook that up. And let's just go and load in a HDRI. So I'm gonna just use just the skylight garage here. I will jump through our camera, gonna lock it off. And let's go look at our piggy here. And into our material library, I'm going to go and create a Karma Material Builder. We're going to use a Material X image here. And I want to go and start grabbing my stuff from Cops. So I'm going to swap back to my Substance, my substance Desktop, uh, just so I can get access to Cops easily enough. Now uh, let's dive into my Material Library and in here. And I'm going to quick, set a quick mark for here. I'll just put it to four. Now, uh, my material X image, I would like to reference my cop. So uh, previously when I was doing this kind of setup, uh, I could get the cop to read automatically using OP for Karma CPU, but I could not get it to work for Karma XPU. But it looks like they have updated that. Uh, so that's quite nice for this kind of workflow, so I don't have to write it all out to disk. Now, it was writing out to disk very quickly anyway, uh, and I suspect that it's, if you're running into stability issues, it makes a lot of sense to write these out to disk and just read them straight back in from disk. But it is nice to be able to have the data just flow from one area to the next. Uh, so let's put that into base color just here. I uh, will set the default color to be like a yellow or something like that in case it's not working. Now let's go and uh, we'll go back up a level here and let's assign it. So we'll go back up to our stage. I'm going to set my stage to a quick mark of three here. Uh, I'll set my cop over here to two. And in just a minute, I can set stops up for the one. Uh, let's assign this material. Uh, so we're going to say, uh, pick a material here and we're going to pick karma material. So we need to say what we want to assign it to. Let's get rid of that. And let's say all geometry primitives just for now. So let's go and see if we can uh, render this now with Karma XPU. Uh, I'm going to save it just before I go and do this. Now, previously it would draw an error and it would default over to CPU anyway, but you can see now it is, and it's initializing here on the optics and it is rendering on the optics. So it appears that we can now reference directly in from COPS. We need to be a little bit careful. Uh, it's not as stable as I would like it to be. Doing mad updates over in COPS here uh, is ideally what we'd be able to do, but it can crash out our render so often what i do is i pause the render do my updates uh, take a little step back here and then just restart the render again uh, let's go and set up our camera uh, so let's jump into our camera here i don't really want the uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio so let's go and change that so if i go to view here i'm going to change it from 16 by 9 to uh let's see we'll do square so one by one I'm going to turn off the light view here. Yeah, that's that's working out just fine. And let's save to our gallery as we load in our different textures. We'll be able to see what they're all doing. And hit four to jump back in. Uh, we've already copied the uh, the file here. So let's go and grab our next one is going to be our normals. And actually, we can just do this. We can just go NML. And the case of bringing in uh, normal maps, we need to go and we need to go and put down a normal map and we're going to go from out to in from out is going to go into normal here 
Uh, so that seems to have done something and we're getting through some amount of detail here. Now it looks like it is uh, pushing the marks outward and I'd like them to go inward. So uh, let's set this to minus one just for now. Yeah, so that's starting to cut in with the normal detail just through there. Let's go and see if we can grab our displacement as well. So uh, we'll just change this over to DSP. And we need to go out towards displacement here. Yeah, displacement is normally very, very high. So we're probably going to have to lower that a significant amount. So 0 0.02 maybe. Hard to say what the displacement is doing uh, with the normal map turned on. So uh, let's turn the normal map off. Now our displacement is coming through as color and really it is a float value. So let's try turning that over to float. We can definitely see we're getting some displacement, but we're also getting cracking on the surface along the seams. Uh, let's go back up to the stage level here. Under geometry handling here, turn on treat polygon as a subdivision surface. Yeah, so that's helped with our cracking. Now let's just jump back in here. And let's just try dialing this up a little bit. Let's move up to 0 0.3 and just see. Ah, yeah, so we're definitely getting something. Our pig is starting to feel chunky. And again, we can test the before and after. So this is what we had before, and this is what we have after with just the displacement. So we're definitely getting some displacement coming through. Let's go and plug back in our normal map on top of that now. Yeah, so that's starting to come through with some of the finer details now. And now we can go and adjust uh, things on the actual uh, standard surface shader itself. Uh, let's try driving up our metalness a little bit here. Now, when we're dealing with metalness, controlling factor is going to be our roughness here in terms of how shiny or not shiny it's going to be. Uh, let's try bringing in a roughness map to try and control that. Now, our roughness map in this case, really, uh, we can leave it be something like our displacement map. So why don't we just copy this guy for a second and maybe we'll invert it over here. And let's call it uh, RO for roughness. And let's put down another uh, material image here and we'll call in RO. Do a remap. So a TXL remap here. And we could probably do a remap for our displacement also. Uh, but let's just take this guy and we're going to plug it into specular roughness. Roughness here. So now we'll get shininess on the outside, but not so much on the inside. And of course we can go and tweak all of these values. This is basically just the levels. Uh, we should probably put one of these down here on our displacement as well. Tweak that a little bit over in shading as well. Uh, so I just spread everything out a little bit. I think the other one I will try and drive is maybe a mission. A uh, mission. And yeah, let's drive a mission here as well. Uh, so that's giving me a mission everywhere. And that's not really what I'm looking for. Uh, let's change this from color over to a float. And that will make all of these guys uh, sliders. Uh, let's just adjust these values. So I want to get some sort of a mission happening. Uh, in here yeah that's starting to work a little bit better uh, so let's give it an emission color just to see if that's working yeah so that's going to start glowing in the center there we'll be able to dial it up and down here to get more of the color to come through so that's giving me better control inside my marks uh, maybe let's go and turn on uh, let's give it a little bit of sheen so we get a little bit of metal sheen towards the edges uh, let's give that a color and let's make it kind of a blue or something like this. So we're getting this kind of and I don't use metal kind of feel. Let's jump back up to our stage here. I'm going to try pulling down the intensity of our light just a little bit here. Yeah, starting to come together now quite nicely, I think. Uh, let's try and create maybe another camera. Uh, we'll just call this one roaming and we can go and take a look around our scene. So hopefully you can see that we're starting to get some nice detailing. We're picking up the nice shapes of those uh, alpha brushes that we were using. I'm not quite seeing as much of the shape of the rocks as I would like to see. Um, now I'm going to pause this here and I'm going to jump back over into SOPS and we can try adjusting some of our values over here. I'm going to save the file. Uh, I haven't found it to be as stable as I would like jumping over and back between all of these. Uh, so this is kind of coming all the way back to our texture mask paint. 
and we can go in and adjust things here. I want to come down to my HVL noise really. Uh, let's break the uh, the remap here for a second. Yeah, this looks like it's going upside down. Now that happens sometimes. I mean, we could flip it the other way, but it seems to be coming through okay in the render. Uh, it's really a question of the size. So let's try playing around with the size here and see if we can get some more interesting details relative to those masks. Okay, and let's come back over here and see what that might look like. And of course, that's been put everywhere. Uh, so let's go and mask that. And now we're just getting it through these shapes here. So let's see if we're picking that up in cops. Uh, maybe we're not picking it up as much as I would like over there. Maybe we should be picking it up in the height. Uh, so we are picking up those shapes in the height and we should get them in the normal map just there. And we should get them in the displacement map over here. So they are showing up there and there. They're just not showing up so much in the color because we're using the mask here. Uh, let's just try adding it in on top over here somewhere. Put it into color. And all of these guys are 2K. So let's make this one 2K as well. And instead of using mask, now let's use height. And let's equalize. And now we're getting all shapes back again. And let's just try adding it back in on top here. So we'll put a composite down. We multiply here and we put it back over the pig. Looks like they're appearing in the right spot. We come back out here. Yeah, maybe that's helping to pick it up a little bit more. In terms of the colouring now affecting those little rocks. Possibly they're a little bit too small. Let's go back to our high field noise now and say, okay, let's go to 30 then. And let that kind of cook all the way down through it. Okay, let's go back over to uh, Karma. So I'm going to go to the stage first and I found it's kind of wise to just set it all back to the start so we don't crash it out all the time. And uh, we're going to go back over to our Houdini GL here and just say unpause. Come back down to here, jump back into our camera. Let's go and render it here again and say over to camera XPU. Now that's me being overly cautious. Often what I'm doing is uh, I'm just restarting the render. So I'm getting a little bit more of those rocks coming through and this kind of maybe lava kind of feel thing going on in the background. Uh, so I can take my time now and I can go and adjust these. Uh, I can go back and paint my mask again if I want to. Uh, I could swap out this pig for another character, uh, like Flippy or whatever, and I could start painting over Flippy. So it's early stages for me using this workflow. It does take a little bit of setup, but it's not an enormous amount of nodes, really. I mean, we only have a small few nodes over here in SOPs to deal with. A few over here in Cops and a few over in Karma. And we're doing quite a lot. We are uh, generating all of these shapes. We're doing all the texturing over here. And doing shading look dev all at the same time. So outside of the initial setup, I think it's uh, potentially quite a flexible workflow. Because we can generate lots of different brush shapes with our texture mask paint. And then we've got a lot of control in height fields. And height fields are generally very fast uh, to generate. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that uh, they're also... A lot more flexible than just doing terrains you can create quite a lot of interesting shapes in there it should be possible to take this initial setup here and just duplicate it a couple of times and you could have different texture mask paints for different shapes that you were creating in Eidfields. now obviously your graph is going to get more complex as you do that but it is possible to say that we could paint in uh, different types of noises across our surfaces we could also take attributes from our surfaces and import them into cups so we could do some clever things with sop attributes um, to fade off masks or to fade off different noises as they move over the surfaces again uh, there's lots to explore but hopefully you've got a feel for how you might go about uh, making a start with this kind of workflow i do think this kind of workflow uh, has a lot of potential you're basically taking the power of houdini and adding a little bit of substance designer and a little bit of substance painter in there on top uh, there are rumours that side effects are updating cops in the background, so hopefully we'll get a bit more speed and a few more brushes and things like that to round out the workflow and give us a bit more artistic control. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, thanks for sticking with me and I will see you in the next one.